just a pinch of review. So you don't, you shouldn't feel like you have to write down everything I'm saying right now at the moment, but just kind of think about it. Be like, okay, all right, I remember this from yesterday. We learned about sig figs yesterday. Now, when we have something that's not a zero, so a two, a six, a nine, something like that, um, when are those significant? Always, yeah. So anything that's not a zero always counts as significant. So any single digit, okay, like this guy right here. Um, let's see here, 63.19. That have four sig figs because none of those are a non-zero. Right, I'm sorry, all those are a non-zero. Uh, now zeros get a little tricky because sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Uh, Gabby, a leading zero. So for example, this would have a couple leading zeros. Um, would are leading zeros significant? I'll get you next here, Harry. No, no, you don't have to write this down. You're okay. It's just a little bit of review. Even if there's a decimal? They're never significant? Is there your Sam? Okay, the two, the two after the decimal are significant, the one before it is, right? Which one is it? The answer is none of those are significant. So a leading zero is defined by, it doesn't matter where the decimal is. She's like, why do you do that to me? A leading zero, if there's no non-zero in front of it. So the zeros here, there's no non-zero in front of them. That means they're leading zeros. And leading zeros are never significant. It doesn't matter if there's a decimal. It doesn't matter where the decimal is. They're just never significant. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I'm just making sure you knew. She's like, why does he pick on me like this? Um, Emerson, so captive zeros, so maybe something like this. Where we have a zero stuck in between a couple non-zeros. What about those? Always significant, no matter what. Let's see. No matter what. And then the goofy one are trailing zeros. So maybe you got something like this. 10.0. Um, are trailing zeros significant? Huh. I saw a plot over there, Kayla. I was like, kind of, sort of. When are they significant? When are they not significant? And there's a decimal, right? So trailing zeros are significant only if there's a decimal. Only if there's a decimal, okay? So in this particular one right here, no decimal. So we're forced to assume this person didn't actually measure that zero. They're like, ah, it's about 10. It might be 9. I don't know. Uh, it's about 10. Whereas this person's like, look, I know that that's a 1 right here. I know that this is a 0. And I'm pretty sure this is a 0. It might be 10.1, but I'm pretty sure it's 10.0. That's very different than just saying, like, eh, about 10, okay? So that decimal is a person's way of saying, hey, I actually measured this. I actually measured this. Okie dokie. So the rule, the rule, and again, you don't have to write this down because this is not new from yesterday. The number of sig figs in the weakest measurement, I want to emphasize the number of sig figs in the weakest measurement, that's what determines your sig figs. And a lot of you guys probably did this one on the bell work, where you did 2.6 times 3.78. The calculator will tell you, come on now, the calculator, I don't know why it's doing that, will tell you that it's 9.828. How many sig figs does 2.6 have? Two. How many sig figs does 3.78 have? Three. So how many are you allowed to keep? Three. Only two. So you have to round after that second sig fig of the 9.8. Okay, you have to round. Does that 2 tell the 8 to round up or down? Yeah. Down. So the final answer here will be 9.8. Only two sig figs. Only two sig figs. Alrighty. So um, let's go ahead and talk about the thing that was missing from yesterday, which was addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction. So here's where the pencil is getting picked up. This is brand new information. So let's talk about apples, okay? Let's talk about apples. Um, let's see here. Sophia, if you know for sure you have three apples over here, and you have, and you know for sure you have four apples over there, how many total apples do you have? Seven, right? And is there any doubt in your mind that you have seven? No, because you know for sure you have three, and you know for sure you have four. So this is an absolute known quantity. You know it. 
Now, similar situation here, Sophia. What if I was like, hey, you have three apples over here, but you have like four, maybe five apples over here. Okay. Uh, how many apples do you have now? Yeah, seven or maybe eight, right? Seven or maybe eight. So you had a known quantity plus an estimated quantity, and that left you with an estimated quantity. Do you see how your answer's quality overall went down a little bit? Because you're like, okay, I knew it before. Now I'm, like, estimating it. I mean, it's not like it's going to be 50. Like, you know it's not going to be 50. You know there's a range. Like, yeah, it's like 7 or 8 probably. Um, but it's not quite as strong of an answer as I know for sure I have 7 apples. And lastly, so if you, what if I had 3 apples plus blah, 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 apples? How many apples do you have now? Right. 3 plus blah, 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 blah is, well, I have, no, I have no clue. I have no idea, right? Three plus some unknown number, you have no idea what it is, means you have an unknown number of apples. You have no clue. In case you're wondering, the pronunciation of that is, blah, 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 blah. okay? Uh, people at home are like, what, is the mic broken? Like, what's happening? Um, right, so you can see your final answer's confidence will depend on what were tossed in there in your addition or subtraction in terms of computation. So you'd be like, okay, known plus known gives me a known. Known plus an estimated kind of drops down to an estimated. Known plus, like, no idea means I really have no idea. Okay? Maybe that, no, that unknown number is one. So you have four apples. Maybe that unknown number is 200 billion. Okay? Look, you just have no clue. That'd be a lot of apples. That's probably more than what's on the earth, I would imagine, right? A lot of vitamin C. A lot of, a lot of apples, yeah. So anyways... I want you to go ahead and write this one, this math problem up here on the left. And notice what I've done. I've written it vertically, and I've lined up the decimal. And I want you to do the, it the exact same way. So write this vertically, and don't worry about the words on the right. Don't worry about the words on the right. Just write that math. 0 0.95 plus 0 0.0153 equals 0 0.9653. So I've already plugged it into the calculator for you. Now, I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to walk you through this, okay? So, do we have any doubt that this is a zero right here? No. no. Do we have any doubt that this is a nine right here? No, we do not. Now, this five up here, what is this? Is this known or estimated? It's estimated, right? It's the last value of a measurement. So, that's estimated. What is this one right here? Known, right? So we have an estimated plus a known, which means that this 6 is probably estimated. Okay, So we're pretty sure it's a 6. We don't know for sure. We're pretty sure it's a 6. Do we have any clue what is behind the 5 in 0.95? No. We have no idea what it is. It doesn't say. We just have no clue. Maybe it is a 0. Maybe it's a 9, though. We don't know. Um, and even though we know that this is a 5 right here, that means we really have no clue if this is truly a 5 in the answer. So we need to cut things off once we are no longer at F estimation. So what does my final answer come out to be? 0.96 rounded up because the 5 after it, you get 0.97. So here's the answer, or here's what you can write down. Round your answer to the last digit, that's different than weakest place, or weakest measurement, the last digit you have some confidence in. So round your answer to the last digit you have some confidence in. And the official rule, what I would say is, the weakest place limits how you can round. The weakest place limits how you can round. So we're going to go ahead and just do, let's try, um, I want you guys to write down just these two problems right here. Just write these two in your notes. So 14.0 plus 3.000, and 5.2 plus 9.40. Just write those two in your notes for me. And I've already plugged them into my calculator, so I know what the calculator is going to tell me in terms of my answers. So you're just writing down those two. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Am I in love with what? Brian Reynolds. Brian, like the actor? Yeah. Um, He's okay, I guess. I huh. Well, this is the one I'm recording, so that's going to be a weird note for you folks at home, whatever. I'm not in love with Ryan Reynolds, but I do think he's funny. Anyway, um, let's take a look at these. 14.0 plus 3.000. Is there any doubt that this is a one right here? 
None whatsoever. So we're going to keep that for sure. Is there any doubt that this is a 7 right here? None whatsoever. We're going to go ahead and keep that. Now, if we look here in the tenths place with the TH on the end. This is estimated, right? It's the last value of a measurement. This is known. So what does that make this first zero? An estimated plus a known would make it estimated, right? We don't have to drop. We're still pretty sure it's a zero. It's not random. We're pretty sure it's a zero. But then after that, do we have any clues behind this first zero? Do we have any clues behind this? No. We don't. And so we need to cut things off. This is why you want to line up your decimal so you just do a line straight down. So my final answer should be what? 17.0. 17.0. Okay. So let's do one more together. Um, and 14.60 here, is there any doubt that this is a one whatsoever? Okay, you're going to grab a seat. Um, no, there's not. Is there any doubt that this is a four? Nope. No, there's not. And then in the tenths place, with the TH on the end, we have 0.2 is estimated, 0.4 is known. So estimated plus a known, what does it tell us about this 0.6? It's estimated. But do we have any idea what's behind the 0.2 and 5.2? No, we don't, so we need to cut it off. So we cut it off, so my final answer becomes what? 14.6. And please notice for me, 14.6 has three sig figs in it. And you're like, wait, but we had two sig figs plus three sig figs. So the whole counting sig figs, just throw that all out the window. If you're doing addition and subtraction, that doesn't matter at all. It's all about the place value. It's all about the place value. So we've got, where is it? This worksheet right here. This will be a great way to get ready for the quiz on Friday, especially this section right here. So on the back, on the back, you'll notice that you have um, addition, multiplication, division, subtraction. They're all mixed together. Your quiz on Friday, you will have a mixture of all of them. There won't be like, here's the multiplication section. Here's the subtraction section. So you need to be able to go back and forth between all of them seamlessly. So the back part of this worksheet is the best way to get prepared for your quiz on Friday. And that's a wrap.